Greetings and welcome to Jeff Hook Films. Today we're going to talk about a British fantasy gothic horror. It's It's got wolves. And David Warner. So, why not? Let's review The Company of Wolves. This movie starts out with a dog running through the woods and a car entering an estate and a young girl comes out to greet her parents and she's sent upstairs to go wake up her sister who's sleeping and she's a mean bitch. Coming out, pest. It's not because I want you either, it's because mommy wants you. Her room gets dark and windy and then we see her sister running through the woods in spider webs and she's being mildly attacked by stuffed animals. This might be a dream because we keep flashing back to the younger sister sleeping. It's kind of creepy, kind of like an Alice in Wonderland, which is funny because her name is Alice and she gets chased by wolves. Well, dogs that are made to look like wolves and their orange glowy eyes stare her down and she collapses. I mean, did you even try to pet one? The next day, Rosaline, the sleeping girl, says goodbye to her dead sister in what looks like the past. What does she die of? I mean, there's not even a bite mark on her. Granny rides back with the family and it's nice to see David Warner and Granny takes Rosaline back to her place through the woods because mom's in no state to take care of her. The tea. The, the. Shall I take her home with me tonight? Her mother's in no fit state to look after her. If only you would. Come back. Granny tells her a story about a wolf and her story starts out pretty fucking odd and she doesn't care. It's about a traveling man who married this bride and he's pretty odd too. Much time passes and the bride wakes to the sound of howling wolves, so the next day the town goes looking for him. They must have taken him when he was making water, when a man is at his most vulnerable. Well, a little time passes, she gets remarried, has some kids, and the first husband walks in one winter and asks for some food. He's mildly annoyed that she has some kids, and then he starts ripping his own face off. This is one of the strangest transformations I've seen. Her second husband walks in and grabs an axe and takes care of it. This is why she should always have swords around. <laughs> Hubby then slaps her for making a comment and then Granny makes an excellent point to Rosaline. I'd never let a man strike me. Well, they're nice as pie until they've had their way with you. But once the bloom is gone, oh, the beast comes out. Sleeping that night, Rosaline wakes to the sounds of howling wolves. Then they walk back through the woods the next day. Seriously, her sister was just killed in these woods. And they go see mom and dad and they have dinner. Rosalina goes to get some water from the well and then she plays with a young boy. That night, she wakes up to the sound of her parents doing it. What's more frightening, waking up to the sound of your parents doing it or the wolves howl? The next day, she talks to mommy and asks her if daddy hurts her. The odd boy gives her some flowers and asks to go for a walk after service. We see Granny sitting on her sister's grave and giving her more odd advice. And then we see a young blonde boy who sees a car pull up and Chancellor Valorum's inside. And he gives him a potion and then he drives off. Nice cameo. Now use it wisely. Waste not, want not. He rubs it on his chest and hair begins to sprout and then vines pull and just take him away and he screams. No! 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 Ah! Apparently it was another story. Granny's making a quilt, or rather a red riding hood. In church we see the boy looking at Rosaline. I think she can do better. Randomly baby spiders start falling onto her Bible. And then everybody in the town watches the two of them walk off into the woods. He tries to get some romance going and then she hides after they kiss but her sister was just killed in these woods. She decides to climb a tree and she climbs so high she finds these eggs hatching out trinkets of some sort. Rosalina shows up fine and her father decides that he's gonna go out and hunt with the men. So they dig a hole and they put the duck inside of it as bait. And then Rosalina tells her mother a story. And I feel like we're jumping time periods again. Another wedding, another nameless bride and groom. And then a pregnant woman wanders in from the woods and it's the groom's child. She must be a witch because she starts turning them all into wolves. 
Back at the hunt, we see that the wolf shows up, but this is why you don't bring your stupid kid. Dad, it's a wolf! The wolf falls into the trap and they fire many bullets into it. And then father said he took a trophy and they all leave. When I cut it off the carcass for a trophy, it was a four ball. And then before my very eyes. <gasps> is it daddy? Is it someone you knew? What do I know whose hand it is? All I know is what I see. Get it out. He tosses the hand into the fire. Rosalina takes a knife on her journey towards grandma's house and the creepy boy looks like he's gonna follow her. She walks past the mines and dismisses the boy from joining her. Then she runs into a well-dressed man who takes her knife from her and offers to take her on a picnic. He's much older than her, so this is pretty creepy. And then he shows her his compass. It was this compass that brought me safe through the wood. But you lost your way in the wood. But I found you. He mentions werewolves, and then he makes a bet with her that he could get to her granny's house faster with his compass than she could, even though she knows the way and he bets his compass for her kiss. Seriously, dude, you are so much older than her. And when he gets there, he's eating blood and his eyes are yellow. What have you done with my granddaughter? Nothing she didn't want. <laughs> he does battle with Granny till he slaps her porcelain head off. Rosalina arrives and he's waiting. He tells her an obvious lie and we can see Granny's dead. He tells her to burn her cloak and there's many wolves outside. He also tells her that he lives in both worlds. And then he wants that kiss and then he gets it. One my bet, so now you owe me. I remember. Jesus, what big teeth you have. He starts to transform. Come on, girl, get the axe. We get another one of those weird transformations. And then she pets him and tells him a story about a wolf, about a she-wolf girl who came out of the well, ran to a church because she was transforming, and then she was just running around the streets naked. I mean, wow, what a story. The wolf is much friendlier in its dog form and less creepy. And then the village shows up and the wolf jumps out the window and then her mom comes running in and she sees a wolf with Rosalina's necklace and figures it's her daughter. No! Then we return to the sleeping girl in her regular home and we see wolves running up the stairs, mostly German shepherds, and she finally wakes and she screams as a wolf jumps through the window at her. She lives on the fourth floor. Seriously. The end. This had a budget of 2.3 million and it made a box office of 4.3 million. How? This thing won awards. The granny was played by Angela Lansbury, who's a pretty accomplished actress, and she was really just warning her daughter of the dangers in the world. I enjoyed seeing David Warner, who you know is in the best Star Trek movie, Stefan Ray, you know, a couple recognizable actors, even Terrence Stamp. Everybody was un underutilized in this. I wish they took the time to come up with names for these characters. I'm not sure why they even bothered with the present day stuff. But Sarah Pattison was 13 and had to deal with some pretty adult themes. She was really good in this, especially at 13. I kept seeing Amelia Clark. Surprisingly, she only did four films, two in the 80s and two in the mid 2000s. Shame, she seemed pretty talented for a child actor. You had your dream, your fantasy, your constant jumping, the storytelling. They did have some enjoyable sets. I just wish they kept the story in the past and you know, just kept it as a, a linear story because you know, I was all over the place and that ending, oh, that ending just ruined it for me. <laughs> a company of wolves and did anybody keep a company of wolves in this? Not really. I wouldn't check this out, but I mean, it's it's more for kids, though I think this might scare the shit out of your kids. So show it to them anyways, and as always, thanks for watching.